Actually, I knew Sheldon Harnick. And how did I know Sheldon Harnick? I had done an off-Broadway musical called Anything Goes, the first revival of Anything Goes. It's been done 150 times since. Uh, we did the first revival, and uh, the soubrette, remember that term? The soubrette was Marjorie Gray. And Sheldon Harnick was courting Marjorie Gray. So he saw the second act of Anything Goes, you know, every other night. <laughs> and we got to be friends. He got, to, he, as he told me later, got to be a fan at that point. Uh, I never got into one of his shows, but I did get an audition for everyone. I auditioned for Fiddler, I auditioned for uh, Apple Tree, uh, I auditioned for She Loves Me. I never got the part, but at least I got the shot. Uh, until I replaced in, in Apple Tree, uh, when Larry Blyden left, I had a, a replacement. That was the first time I ever did a Harnick and Bach score. And Sheldon was a big fan. And we were socially friendly as well. Uh, I remember being out at his place in, uh, the, in the Hamptons when he was telling me about working on the Rothschilds. He says, there's a part for you in it. I didn't hear anything until they were ready to do it. And then uh, it was, I guess, through Sheldon that, uh, or his uh, input that got me the audition and the, and the role. I played the role of Meyer. Meyer is the patriarch of the Rothschild family, the, uh, the subject actually of the whole first act. It's Meyer, his wife, and as his children grow. The second act of the Rothschilds is about the second generation, more or less, how they responded to uh, the establishment, if you will. Um, it was, uh, I remember leaving town and I spoke with my, my, I went up to see my agent to more or less to say goodbye, but getting on a train, getting on a plane to go to Detroit. And she said, how's it going? And I, and I said to her, if I do my job well, it won't work. She said, what do you mean? I said, I die right in the beginning of the second act. If I'm good enough in that first act, the audience is not going to want me to die. It's going to, you know, or they're not good. They're going to lose interest once I die. You can't do that on a stage. You can't have an audience invest in a character and then hopefully reinvest it in, in his children later on. You know, it's, uh, it was always a problem with the show. And uh, that's exactly what happened. And so uh, the next thing I knew, they had a song in the second act, and then they moved my death a little later. And I actually attended a conference, uh, which took place about eight years after my death. But they said, history be damned, we got to keep the character alive. It really was. It was a wonderful character in the beginning. I mean, it was so easy to identify with somebody who, who had this desire to succeed and to, and to make, you know, bring his family out of the ghetto. And to, uh, so it's a, it was a terrific character. Uh, and it, uh, got me a Tony, so it really helped me personally. Uh, but that's, basically that's what happened to the show. The show was not totally successful because it kind of lost its way in the middle of the second act and uh, they never really, really solved that second act problem. How did it feel to win the Tony? You know, you, well, Certainly, I, at that point, I had been in theater about f 15 years. I don't know how many, I must have done 12 musicals by then. Understudy, chorus, you know, small parts, but you always think someday, you know. So I had done my Tony speech in the shower, I can't tell you how many times. Uh, and then, a, to get nominated. 
you know, was, was you know, after, as I said, uh, I was actually 40 years old by the time I was nominated. I was not a up and coming young actor anymore. I was, <laughs> so it was, uh, I had a lot of confidence that I was gonna win it. It was um, interesting uh, other nominees, but there was no real heavy competition I didn't feel. So uh, I had I had a lot of con confidence that I was going to go up there. It was well, it was life changing certainly, certainly career changing. Yeah, all of a sudden, you know, can you do can you fly to California and do a guest shot on some series? You know, all of a sudden that was in the works. That was not true. I did some local you know, some TV in New York, but not all that much. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you're on the, on the radar scope. It's a uh, total, total change in career. In career.